waking up and stretching your arms, lifting something heavy, or even brushing your hair, none of these activities would have been possible if upper limb muscles are not functional. Today, we will talk about muscles that help to carry out these functions, which are muscles of upper limb. Let's have an overview of upper limb. Upper limb is the portion of the body that begins from the shoulder joint to the fingers. It is further divided into upper arm, forearm, and the hand. These three portions have a combined number of 30 bones in one of our limbs. As you can see here, the skeleton, in the upper arm, we have one humerus bone. In the forearm, we can find the radius and ulna, which are present parallel to each other. And lastly, in the hand, we have the remaining 27 bones. Most distally, we have the eight carpals, which articulates with five metacarpals. And most proximally, we have the phalanges which are 14 in number. Again, these all make up 30 bones in total. So all these bones have particular attachment points for several muscles. Tendons are these special structures that allow this attachment of muscles to the bones. Just like ligaments attach to bones, tendons attach the muscle to the bone. Now tendons are made up of collagen fibers and are very tough structures that are able to withstand pressure. Did you know that the muscles get their name from the Latin word musculus, which means little mouse? It is maybe because as the muscles contract and relax, they look like small mouse moving under our skin. Or maybe some muscles look like little mice. I know it sounds silly, but this is just some cool information I found while preparing for this lecture. Okay, so all these muscles team up to allow different movements of our arm, like we already discussed. Now in this video, we will just be focusing on the muscles of upper part of the arm. It is the region between the shoulder joint and the elbow joint and consists of one bone called humerus. It is necessary to understand the anatomical landmarks of this funny bone first, to learn the attachment and functions of the muscle. For details about this bone, we have a complete lecture on scaria.com. So just as an overview, humerus has three parts. The proximal end, the middle part, that is also known as the shaft and the distal end. At the proximal end, it joins with the glenoid fossa of the scapular bone, forming a ball and socket joint, known as the glenohumeral joint or the shoulder joint. Coming to the other extremity, which is the distal end, it is attached to the radius and ulna. They all get together to form elbow joint, which we all know is type of hinge joint. So both these joints allow the limb to exhibit a multiple range of motion. Remember, these movements are facilitated by four types of muscles. Let me tell you that the muscles of upper limb are basically divided into compartments. Now, the question arises, what is a compartment in term of anatomy? A compartment is basically a well-defined region that contains a group of muscles. Now, the muscles of upper arm are basically grouped into two compartments. The anterior compartment, as you can see here, and the posterior compartment. We divided these for the purpose of better understanding, since it is easier to study the muscles this way. So we will learn the muscles according to these compartments. Now, if we zoom in to the anterior compartment of the arm, we have three important muscles in this group. The major muscle is bicep brachii muscle. Then we have the coracobrachialis, and lastly, the brachialis muscle. And in the posterior compartment, 
we have a lone muscle known as tricep muscle. You must note that the muscles in the anterior compartment, which is basically this portion of the arm, these are known as the flexors. They play a major role in flexion, which is basically this movement. And the muscles in the posterior compartment, which is back here, is called the extensors because it is involved in the extension of the arm. We will take a look at these in details when we talk about the movements. So, an easy way to remember these muscles of the anterior compartment, we have a mnemonic. Remember BBC? Where B is bicep brachii, another B is brachialis, and the C is coracobrachialis. We will talk about these muscles in the next section one by one. But before moving on, we will be using the term origin and insertion while talking about these muscles. So what is origin and what is insertion? The origin is the region of attachment of muscle of the bone, which is present proximally. It usually stays immobile during contraction, where the insertion is present distally, which is away from the body, and when the muscle contracts, the insertion provides mobility. So just to recap, if the muscular attachment is immobile, it means origin. And when it's mobile, it means insertion. So now let's take a deeper look into the location of these muscles. Along with the important functions, they play according to their location in the arm. Well, the lecture is not over yet. If you want to know more details about these four muscles, head on to scadia.com.